Uh, welcome back to AP U.S. History. This is Chapter 13, talking about uh, the Second Great Awakening, um, the Reform Movement in America, um, the different groups that uh, sp sprang up uh, during this time, trying to pursue perfection uh, before the Civil War. Um, a uh, product of the Second Great Awakening is that people believe that they have a moral obligation as Christians to go out and make the world a better place for all people. And so that will uh, drive them. Uh, Tuckerville came to the United States in 1832. Uh, he had this observation in France. I had almost always seen the spirit of religion and the spirit of freedom pursuing courses diametrically opposed to each other. But in America, I found that they were intimately united and they reigned in common over the same uh, country. Religion was the foremost of the political institutions of the United States. America truly will become a religious uh, country because of the Second Great Awakening. Uh, now, uh, these were the major issues of the time, uh, freeing of the slaves, abolitionism, temperance, uh, moderate use of alcohol, uh, women's rights, educational reforms, uh, mental institutions uh, were to be um, become more humane for those who were unbalanced, uh, prison reform, um, eliminating debtor prisons, and stopping all wars. Uh, the Second Great Awakening, um, a spiritual reform with, from within, uh, social reforms and redefining the ideas of equality. If everyone is doing better, then it's uh, good for the society. And so these were some of the issues of the time. A memory aid that might help you, A is for abolition, so a totally wicked elephant made people devour worms. Um, you might want to remember that. Uh, maybe if you come up with something better, let me know. Uh, temperance. Uh, we'll talk about slavery uh, later, but we will concentrate on some of the, the reforms that uh, were concerned to American society. Uh, temperance being right at the top. Uh, in the, the 1800s or the 19th century, the uh, United States was known as the Alcoholic Republic. It was estimated that a, a man would consume uh, five gallons of uh, whiskey a year. Uh, the American Temperance Society will uh, come about in 1826, and they will be opposed to this demon rum. Uh, and this will embrace both women and men. Um, fighting the evils of alcohol. And you can see it from this graph that uh, during this time uh, it, alcoholic or alcohol, alcohol consumption peaks in the 1820s and as a result of this uh, relig religious movement, the, great, great, or the second great awakening, uh, the consumption of alcohol will decrease. Uh, they believe that alcoholism alcoholism uh, decreased uh, work efficiency, tore uh, families apart. Uh, the American Temperance Society um, within a few years had a hundred local groups uh, urged drinkers to give up alcohol altogether. Uh, two major strategies in early battles against alcohol uh, pointing out to people that it was really a problem. This uh, cartoon, The Drunkard's progress uh, showing the evils of alcohol. Uh, initially it starts out with temperance, that is reducing the consumption, uh, and then it will switch to prohibition. And eventually, uh, because of the 18th Amendment, alcohol will be banned uh, in a, the consumption and distribution sale of alcohol uh, will be banned in the 20th century. Neil Dow is somebody that you'll probably need to know, and he was considered the father of prohibition. Uh, he helped sponsor a law in Maine in 1831 that prohibited the manufacture and sale of liquor. Uh, by 1857, 12 states had passed various prohibition laws. 
Uh, yet, during the 1850s, many prohibition laws repealed or overturned. So it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of their success. Uh, certainly, there was less drinking among women, uh, and hard liquor consumption decreased. This shows a picture of Neil S. Dow, nicknamed uh, the Napoleon of Temperance, uh, condemning the demon rum. Um, moving along, um, during this time, uh, women are going to be pushing for their rights. Uh, certainly, uh, the market revolution uh, the separated men and women to uh, distinct economic rules. Uh, women are viewed physically and emotionally weaker than men, uh, but also a little bit more refined and artistic. Uh, Republican motherhood is a term that you will need to know, and this is, it really fell upon the women uh, to be the conscience of society and raise their children to become law-abiding and productive citizens. Um, this is a cartoon uh, indicating that if women were uh, in control, then men would be taking care of babies and the me women uh, would be taking care of traditional male roles. Uh, which probably wouldn't be such a bad idea. Uh, for women, they weren't able to vote. Uh, they had the legal status of a minor that is a child. Uh, single could own their own property, uh, but when you got married, you had no control over your property or the children. Uh, you could not initiate the divorce, only the man. Could not make a will, sign a contract, uh, or bring a lawsuit in court without the consent of the husband if you were married. Uh, the cult of domesticity is uh, a concept that we'll uh, need to know. A woman's sphere was in the home, uh, and that's where she civilized her family and her husband. Uh, the power of the woman in, is her Dependence. A woman gives up that dependence on a man to become the reformer. Yields power. Uh, yields the power God has given her for the, her protection, and her characters belongs, uh, and her character becomes unnatural. So, if she were to do something outside the home, other than raise her children and uh, take care of her husband, uh, this would be ungodly. Uh, some of the women wanted to break from traditional homemaking, participate in a uh, public world of men. They wanted to become doctors, lawyers, uh, financiers. Um, but because uh, they don't have the right to vote uh, and they are discriminated against, uh, uh, they have to find other avenues uh, to, to participate in the system. And <clears throat> many women will participate in the temperance and abolitionist movement. Uh, Mott is one of those, along with Katie Elizabeth, or Elizabeth Katie Stanton, uh, will come up with the Seneca Falls Convention, something you need to know, uh, which will, this is going to be held in Upper State, New York, and it will uh, urge equality for all women and the right to sue in court and uh, the right to own property. Um, in the 1840s, there's going to be a split in the abolitionist movement uh, over women's role in it. Uh, Anti-slavery convention uh, was going to be held in London. Mott and Stanton certainly are against uh, alcoholism. Women's, they are for women's rights, and they're against slavery. So they're not just single uh, issue individuals. And the Seneca Falls Declaration of Sentiments is modeled after the Declaration of Independence, calling for more rights for women. Uh, Susan B. Anthony is another woman who is prominent uh, in the women's rights movement. The Grimke sisters uh, are southern women who uh, are pushing for abolitionists and women's rights. Um, so Angela Grimke and Sarah Grimke are some people that you need to know, and Susan B. Anthony. Uh, Mott and uh, Stanton are people that you need to know that are leaders in the women's movement. Uh, Lucy Stone, uh, her followers somewhat 
comically known as stoners, uh, <coughs> were pushing for women's rights. And they held a national convention in 1850. Uh, they pressed for abolitionist uh, movement, uh, freeing of the slaves. Uh, after the Civil War created a women's only suffrage organization, that is, people working to get the women the right to vote. Here shows a picture of Susan B. Anthony. Uh, certainly uh, was not confined just to women's rights, but to a variety of reforms in society. Uh, this shows the Grimke sisters. Uh, f fairly uncommon to find uh, southern women pushing for uh, rights of the blacks. Um, here's a picture of Lucy Stone uh, and the suffrage in movement, the American Women's Suffrage Association, pushing for women's rights. Uh, <clears throat> so Lucy Stoner uh, uh, maintained her maiden name after her marriage, which was fairly uncommon. And of course, the known as stoners, the people who followed her. Bloomer uh, popularized a short skirt and the Turkish trousers. Uh, Bloomer's challenged as too masculine and immoral. So women wearing trousers just wasn't the thing to do. Uh, this is Amelia Bloomer. Uh, Margaret Fuller uh, was a transcendentalist. Uh, she was the editor of The Dial, uh, which championed women's rights. Uh, of course, we talked about the Seneca Falls uh, Convention in 1848, again, organized by Stanton and Mott, pushing for women's rights. This shows a picture of Amelia Bloomer, and uh, to the right you can see uh, this provocative dress that is wearing trousers. Uh, this is Waldo Emerson, Waldo or Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, uh, who is a transcendentalist, um, also pushed for women's rights. This is a picture of uh, Margaret Fuller, uh, the editor of the Dial. Uh, this shows this plaque shows uh, the Seneca Falls Declaration and the women and men who were attended there. Uh, under the sentiments Declaration of Sentiments, it called that for men and women to be equal in all respects. Uh, demanded women's suffrage and launched the women's rights movement. Um, it was opposed by the church and by the press at the time, so they got a lot of criticism uh, from the, the establishment. Uh, they believe most of the, the church uh, pastors and the press believe that a woman's place was in the home. Um, the women's movement uh, pretty much is going to be overshadowed by the Civil War. It isn't going to be too much later to the 20th century that women uh, get their rights. Even though um, they won't have the rights uh, to vote until the 20th century. Even after they get the right uh, to uh, get the vote, they still won't uh, be afforded um, those rights. And we'll stop here and we'll pick this up next.